I think the build-up was, um, was in all finals, it, it feels long. There's a lot going on. I think as a player, you just try and focus individually on yourself in terms of your game preparation and training. There's lots of media and lots of talk around uh, the game itself, and you have to kind of try and block that out. But I think an all-English final probably added to that. As a player, the, the, my main memory is a, a feeling of nervousness and fear, actually, of, of losing the game. It's quite a tense time, really, approaching the game. Well, there's the showpiece night of the European season. Two English heavyweights have ventured east for the first all-English European Cup final. The heavens have opened in Moscow today, but upon whom will the football gods be smiling tonight? Just the one change for Manchester United from the team which sealed their domestic title just 10 days ago. Owen Hargreaves comes in. Paul Scholes missed the final nine years ago, but he starts tonight. A slight surprise for Chelsea. Avram Grant's opting for Michael Essien at right back. John Terry, Frank Lampard, and the two Coles, Ashley and Joe, provide their English call. I think personality in those games is so important. We had an amazing camaraderie in that team and so many different players from so many different countries. It was a miracle how everybody communicated with each other, but everybody always had a smile on their face. A night to save it. Two English rivals on the biggest European stage. Who will prevail in Moscow tonight? We had such a great team, really we did, but there were so many great players, but it was kind of Ronaldo that season was was on a, was on a different planet. And um, we knew if we could get him the ball into an area where he could affect the game, he almost certainly would. He was probably the only player that I wouldn't say had a free pass, but he maybe didn't have to do as much defensively as some of the others just because he gave us so much going forward. Scholes to Brown. Where's Brown? Goes Ronaldo! It's advantage Manchester United! The first blow landed in the Champions League final. And it's Cristiano Ronaldo! Tevez in the centre. And here he is! The carry! Well, check there with a double save. It's a wonderful break that was by United. Rooney, fired up for this tonight. Timmy is there! Manchester United started strong and had a couple of other chances. So we quite rightly went one nil down. And you can kind of put that to the side because you never lose the size of the game. You never lose of what exactly a Champions League final means. So it's again, it's just back to that thing of we must try and win this game. Michael Essie. Michael the way here, Lampard! Chelsea level! Frank Lampard gets the goal! Just before half time! It is a great time to score. Uh, any time's good, but if you're going in at half time mentally 1 0 down against a team as strong as Manchester United, it means so, so much. So to get back in the game, momentum obviously naturally swings. We go in, have a good talk about what, what more we can do in the second half. Fantastic first half in Moscow. One all at the break in the Champions League final. For well, local time in Moscow, we're moving from Wednesday night into Thursday morning. Who will be the hero of the hour? Here's Michael Essien. Chance for Chelsea here. Once you start getting laid on in the game, it gets a bit cagey because people don't want to make mistakes. And I think obviously players are tired, you know, it's a long season. There's a bit of mental fatigue as well. Michael Balak, and to have a go! That was travelling from Balak. Dropper, broken for Cole. Back for Dropper, oh, off the post! So unlucky! Still no winner, still lots of one apiece. We're heading for an extra half an hour in the Champions League final of 2008. 
the game. Fantastic goal. Now it's Balak, and here's Lampard on the turn! Off the screen for the goal again for Chelsea. Ebra on the scene now, and Ebra could be in. Oh, it's Giggs! John Terry with a fantastic clearance for Chelsea. Things are moving over. Didier Dropper becoming involved now for Chelsea. It's a red card for Didier Dropper. Chelsea down to ten men. That's it. We're going all the way in Moscow, deep into the night. It's going to be a shootout. I don't think I'm ever confident with penalties. They're so tense. Um, you're nervous because you don't want to be the man that that lets your side down, literally. But you understand that that's the, the situation you're in. So Carlos Tevez, first up, but Manchester United are scoring. The perfect start for the Reds. Michael Balak, Chelsea's first taker. Oh, Balak, up to the job. Michael Gary, midfield maestro. No doubt about that one. Look what it means to carry. Giuliano Galletti. Very cool, very composed. 2 2 in the shootout. Cristiano Ronaldo. He scored the opening goal of this final. But he's the first man to miss the shootout. Ronaldo denied by Petr Cech. Weirdly, and Ronaldo I know takes a lot of penalties, when you're the team's penalty taker, as I was, you actually take even more responsibility. It maybe adds some nerves, because you're expected to score your one, you know. Can Frank Lampard succeed where Ronaldo failed? Yes, he can! Owen Hargreaves now. I was fortunate, I had never missed a penalty in, in any of the knockout competitions I've ever been in with England or with, with Bayern. And I used to always do the same thing, I'd just smash a top left. Top class penalty, right in that top corner. 3-3 three three so far for Chelsea. Make it four from four, but only just. Nani has to score for Manchester United. He does. Millions have transformed Chelsea, can barely watch. What a climax we could have here. John Terry, the Chelsea captain, one kick to win the Champions League for Chelsea. Terry's big moment, but no! A reprieve for Manchester United, and John Terry, heartbroken, distraught. Devastation for the team, uh, for John. John was our captain, our talisman and, and leader, brave enough to step up and take it. And then due to conditions and fate, unfortunately, it went against him. So I actually made an effort not to be too down and try and go over to him because I could see how much he was hurting. Into sudden death. Anderson. The advantage once again belongs to Manchester United. How are the nerves now? Roman Abramovich, his heart thumping. Kalou has to score, and he does. No end to the drama here tonight. It's been an historic night for Ryan Giggs. Giggs gets the job done, and all the pressure back up on Chelsea once again. If Nicholas Anelka fails now, it would be victory for Manchester United. Chelsea.
it's a huge disappointment and, and, and actually it actually gets worse as it sinks in. If time doesn't heal that one, uh, there you go away and the next days are awful because you realise the amount of work that's gone into it. You realise you've been here many a time before, didn't get to that final. The time you do get there, you miss on a, on a tiny twist of fate with a penalty. The, the beauty of finals is obviously when you win them, but I remember as vividly as the ones I was successful in, the ones that you're not, and that one particularly because of the size of it. 50 years on from the tragedy in Munich, 40 years on from their first European title, the European champions again are Manchester United. It's amazing really to sit there with people you, you love so much, guys you've worked with for 10 months tirelessly, everybody has sacrificed so much, and then to be able to finish a season winning a Champions League, you know, it's just something you realise that's going to stay with you forever.